In this worked example, we're going to look at how we can use angular momentum to look at the origin of a solar system. So let's say we have a star somewhere out in space, and it's got a belt of ice worlds orbiting around it, much like the Kuiper belt in our own solar system. And let's say they are 40 astronomical units out. We'll call that distance R1. Now, let's imagine that the solar system formed from the collapse of a giant molecular cloud. So let's imagine that originally the material that's forming this ring of ice worlds was much larger at some distance r naught, And that it was perhaps a ring of stuff out there that shrank and shrank and shrank until it was forming the circle in here. The question was, how big must that original ring have been? Now let's assume that we know that the initial ring was moving at a velocity v0 of about 1 meter per second. That being the typical velocity maybe in giant molecular cloud. So that is our question. If we start off with a ring of gas traveling at 1 meter per second and it shrinks down until it's forming a spinning orbiting disk of ice worlds 40 astronomical units from a star, how far out must it have been to start with? We need one more fact, the mass of the star. The mass of the star, let's say, is the, the mass of the sun, so 2 by 10 to the 30 kilograms. OK, well, how are we going to do this? Well, first of all, let's work out how much angular momentum the ice worlds have. And then we'll use conservation of angular momentum to work out how far out they would have to be to be traveling at that speed. To know the angular momentum, we have to know how fast they are going. And presumably, as they're in orbit, they must be going fast enough that centripetal force is supplied by gravity. So centripetal force, mass of the ice worlds, um, their velocity, we'll call that velocity 1 squared over r. It's a normal equation for centripetal force, equals gravity, g, mass of the sun, mass of the ice worlds over let's call that R1, R1 squared. Now we can rearrange that. Let's cancel out the R. The mass of the ice worlds disappears. And let's take this R up to there and bring the V. Um, no, we don't need to do that. Let's leave things where they are, take the square root of both sides. So what we get is we get V1 equals the square root of G M sun over r1. Now that's an equation you've seen before for orbital velocity. I can never be bothered remembering it, so I just rederive it every time. It's pretty easy. And we plug numbers into that, and that comes out as about 4.7 kilometers per second. So that's how fast the ice worlds need to move to stay in orbit 40 astronomical units out from a sun-like star. OK. So that's the end state. The initial state is the moving at a velocity of 1 meter per second much further out. How much further out? Well, as the cloud shrinks, you could two ways you could do this. You could uh, look at energy, look at the initial kinetic and potential energy and the final energy, kinetic and potential energy. That doesn't work for gas cloud shrinking because the, as the clouds shrink, they radiate energy away. However, you can't radiate angular momentum away, so angular momentum must be conserved. So the angular momentum... initially is equal to m r naught v naught and finally which is going to be the same thing is equal to m r1 v1 so once again the mass of the ice worlds cancels out we don't need to know how heavy they are and we find that r naught over r1 equals v1 over v naught so the ratio of the radii is the reciprocal of the ratio of the velocities. Now we know that we want a v naught as 1 meter per second as opposed to 4,700. So that ratio is 4,700. 4.7 kilometers a second divided by 1 meter per second. So 4,700. 
So what that means is, is the final distance must be 4,700 times the starting one. It's start off at 40 astronomical units, so the final distance is going to be 40 times 4,700 equals 188,000 astronomical units out. Pretty big.